And we're back for part five. I gotta get some uh, recapping done on this one. Um, if you caught part four, I pretty much just cleaned it up, put it in a new case here. And I did a little preventative maintenance on it already that I did off camera. You'll see these white um, Ishkoma sheath that are going over these posts to help support them. A lot of times what they'll do is when the screw goes in, they'll, they'll flare out and they'll crack from being taken apart too many times. Uh, I got these from Jeff Burt, and I'll, I'll leave a link to his uh, channel. He has these um, uh, 3D printed parts because a lot of times these back clips will break, these posts will split, same thing for the bottom ones. And, and it's a nice little kit that you can buy or individuals and um, renew your case on the inside. And uh, I, like I said, I'll leave a, a link to his uh, website for that. So well, what I'm looking at doing today, I want to recap all these um, electrolytic convert uh, capacitors. There's a bunch of them. There's about 13 on there, I believe. Um, but I did run into a one little problem. I noticed these ones were black and silver. Most of the ones you find are usually a, a um, light blue color. So I started looking at them a little closer and I noticed the values were a lot higher on this one. These aren't in order, but, um, there were, the, the majority of them were all 50 volt, 10 microfarad. And a lot of the uh, 25407 boards I've worked on, or have, all have 25 volt, 10 microfarad. I thought that was kind of high. That just seems ridiculous to have that kind of voltage stored on that 5 volt. I think that's 5 volt rail, but that's all, those are all on. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but that just, that doesn't look right. So I went to schematics, I'm looking at them, and I don't know if I get that in the shot. Let's see. If you look here, a lot of these electrolytical, it says on here, um, are 25 volt, 10 microfarad. 25 volt microfarad, 25 volt microfarad. Now I don't have a revision on this one, so, I can't guarantee that's what's supposed to be in it. But with most of my boards having that, these schematics, I'm going to trust that. I don't think I really need 50 volts on here. And what we've already seen, um, taking this one apart, um, I don't think anybody was on the back with that shielding we had. That looked untouched from the factory. I was a little confused because the... Uh, the one uh, multiplexer there was socketed, so I wasn't sure. Ooh, that sounded like that one cracked. Might have to redo that one. Well, it's a good thing I bought that uh, kit. Yeah, not just creaking. All right. Now, probably going to want to mark some of these. Got the heating iron, the iron soldering iron heating up. I've already got passers ready, laid out. You can see they're a lot smaller, not because of the voltage, but just the newer technology to make them. They're so tiny now that. Uh, it's amazing they can fit them in there. Another one I came across I thought that was strange. I've seen differences in these main, especially this one here on the C90. This one's calling for a 50 volt, 470 microfarad uh, axial capacitor. But all the ones I've had uh, have a 25 volt. I don't. I just don't think we need that kind of 
that that kind of voltage to to draw to to give out but again i'm no i have no background in electronics so i just think using a little common sense might get me a little further than going verbatim off of some of this stuff because Commodore was known to use whatever they had in stock, which brings me back to why I think they had 50 volt. <laughs>
give this a last look over. Oh, it's a ferrite beads I hear rattling. Okay. I don't see any legs I did not trim. I didn't mess up my bodge wires. I think we got everything. I don't see any open ones that don't belong open. Fire it up, give it the smoke test, and we'll check what we got on the rails here for those new regulators. I don't see any bridging there. Okay, that's good. Okay, let me get you set over, set up over here. We'll fire up and see what we get. Okay. What it didn't show is I, I took a minute, a second to uh, spray this with IPA and just cleaned it with a toothbrush to get off that extra flux. So I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't nervous, but I am because... That was probably the roughest uh, <laughs> recapping I've ever had. But again, if they were all easy, it wouldn't be much fun, I guess. <laughs> all right. I'm just double checking everything again. Like I said, I, I am nervous to hit the switch on this. So if this pops, I am not going to be happy. <laughs> I'll go through again, and hopefully it doesn't do much damage if it does. Okay. I don't see smoke. I do have a picture, though. That would have popped right away, because those capacitors, if you put them in the wrong way, they, they let you know. Okay. Well, let's check let's check the voltages then. Can you see that? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. High volts. 20 DC. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Okay. Wires are all tangled. All right, common ground. Check our five volt here. Rail two should be our five volt. Nope. Rip. Oops, I slipped off the ground. There we are. Four point nine one. I think that's good. Coming in is nine point four six. All right, this should be our 12. And we got 11.91. I'm happy with that. Checker. That should still be the same. 5.89. Okay. Okay. All right, that's been on for a little bit. I think that's okay. Well, I guess I could give it a boring dead test cartridge test. Let's see. Yep, seven, eight, one, two, two, three. Let's give this one a try. Oh, it doesn't want to go in there easy. There we go. Takes a second for it to come up.
We have the sound up so we can hear it. There it is. Alright, I think I'm going to call it for this video, but a lot smaller capacitors, just take your time. <laughs> I made it a lot, a lot more difficult than it really has to be, I guess, but that's one more preventative thing done. Make this run a little bit longer. And I think in the next video we'll do the the two in here. I, I if I'm having this bad of a day, I don't want to have to try to take this RF modulator off and just for those two if I'm not having a good day. I think we'll do that in the next video and maybe some heat sinks or something. But this is pretty much almost done, I'm I'm thinking. And uh hopefully you guys had a good laugh with my struggles. And that just proves to you you could do it if I can do it. And thanks for stopping.